Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And I am in my backyard again, and there are lots of outdoor noises, uh, for which I apologize. But this is the best space to do this video, so we're just going to have to suffer through it. I'm finishing up the requested reviews of the original three Dreadnoughts. I've already looked at my favorite Dreadnought, Buzzer, and my second favorite Dreadnought, Torch. So now we're doing some cleanup here, reviewing my third favorite or least favorite Dreadnought, Ripper. I'll do a quick overview of the Dreadnoughts, since I really discussed them more in the first two videos. The Dreadnoughts were a motorcycle gang introduced into the G.I. Joe universe in 1985. They were led by Zartan, who was introduced to G.I. Joe in 1984. The concept of the Dreadnoughts was heavily influenced by post-apocalyptic science fiction movies like Mad Max. The names of the Dreadnoughts are inspired by the different weapons they use to destroy things. Buzzer uses a chainsaw, Torch uses a cutting torch, and Ripper uses a gun with a very large blade on it. We've already looked at Buzzer and Torch, so I'm going to set them aside so we can take a closer look at Ripper. Ripper, as I said, is my least favorite Dreadnought, so we're going to take a very close look at the reasons why. I just don't like this action figure or the character that it represents. Let's start, as we always do, by looking at the accessories, and Ripper came with a lot of accessories, including this rifle, this uh, silver plastic rifle with this enormous blade on the end. It's, it's attached almost like a bayonet, but this is not a bayonet. It's very clear that this weapon is used either for gouging or for hacking, like, a, like an axe. I may not like Ripper, but I really like this gun. This is a great accessory, and it's a little bit different. It's very unusual for a Dreadnought, because the main weapons for the other Dreadnoughts were not weapons that you would use to shoot at somebody. Torch has a cutting torch, and Buzzer has a chainsaw. Both of those would be used for cutting through metal or, you know, just destroying property. But this actually is a firearm. Uh, it has a magazine, and it clearly is intended to use to shoot at people. The birds chirping in the background are driving me absolutely crazy. I hope that's not coming through too much on the microphone, uh, but I may lose my sanity by the end of this video. Ripper's gun is my second favorite accessory that came with the Dreadnought. Of course, my favorite was Buzzer's chainsaw. I just love the chainsaw. But this is pretty cool, too. I really like this. Here, the Dreadnoughts are lined up in order of the awesomeness of their weapons. This gun is the high point of Ripper's accessories. The other accessories I really don't like all that much. He came with what the card contents call a power jaw, which is kind of a Jaws of Life type of deal. Uh, it has a knob there that this hose plugs into. I'll get to the hose in a minute. Uh, and this, of course, will be used to split metal apart, or I guess crush it together, but it doesn't actually work. It's just one solid molded piece of plastic, and uh, it, it doesn't actually function. It's just for looks, and it's really not that cool. It's a two-handed device, so of course if he were to use it two-handed, he wouldn't be able to hold on to this really awesome rifle. Uh, and really, how often would you play with this as a kid? How often would you really pretend that this thing was getting in there and ripping apart uh, metal? I, I just really don't have much of a use for this myself. Attached to the power jaw and the backpack was this black rubber hose, and these black rubber hoses replaced the old wires that used to be attached to the older G.I. Joe action figures' weapons when the weapons would connect to the backpack, and this was an, an improvement. Uh, for instance, Torch had this wire connected to his rifle that ran to his backpack, and that was a real pain. It was difficult to keep in, and of course if you put it in, it kind of warps the wire, and it kind of restricts the movement of the action figure's arm. But these hoses, uh, they don't do that. They don't restrict the movement of the action figure. They're long enough to stretch and to connect into the backpack and the, and the uh, weapon that they uh, connect to. Of course, your biggest risk is losing this, but if you lose one, it's really just a generic uh, black plastic hose and you can get a replacement for it. And that brings us to the backpack. And the backpack was a generator for the power jaws. It makes sense if you have the power jaws, you need a generator for it. And of course you need a hose running from the generator to the power jaws. So it's all very logical. This backpack is actually two parts. There's the generator and there's this rack that fits on it. It does come apart, but I've never found it very easy to get apart. Sometimes I need to wedge something in there and kind of pry this bottom part out. There we go. And this rack, of course, has these two knobs and the 
black hose can fit on these knobs, and it can fit on either side, so I guess, you know, uh, Ripper could hold this uh, right or left-handed, or if you're just plain silly, you can plug it into both sides, and uh, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. But here's the problem I have with the rack and the hose and the backpack, is that it all links up to this power jaw, which I think is useless in and of itself. So if you don't have the power jaw, you don't need the black wire, and you don't need the rack, and you don't need the generator. So frankly, you could do away with all of these and just give him this really awesome gun. I kind of have a problem with backpacks for the Dreadnoughts. Uh, Buzzer's backpack is essentially a gas can uh, for a chainsaw that does not appear to take gasoline. So that's kind of useless. And of course, Ripper's backpack is a generator for this, uh, this secondary weapon, which I think is useless. So the only backpack for the Dreadnoughts that I think makes any sense is torches, because he does have a cutting torch, and a cutting torch, torch does need a fuel tank, so this, in a way, does make sense, but the other two backpacks, I can really live without. Let's look at the articulation of Buzzer. Uh, he had the typical articulation for 1984 G.I. Joe action figures, even though he was released in 1985. That means that he could turn his head from side to side like that, although most G.I. Joe action figures that were released in 1985 had a ball joint at the neck, uh, for instance, Dial Tone here had a ball joint, so he could not only look side to side, he could also look up and down. But the th original three Dreadnoughts only had that side to side motion, which to me means that they were designed in 1984, but they were not released until a year later. He could move his arm up at the shoulder about so far, and he could swing it all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow, so he could move at the elbow at about 90 degrees, and he had a swivel at the bicep, he could swivel his arm all the way around. He was held together with a rubber O-ring that allowed him to move at the torso a little bit. He could spread up his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt and design of Ripper and let's start with his head. And this is where the hate really starts. His head is very weird looking. Uh, starting with his hair, he has a kind of mohawk rat tail sort of thing but he has a full head of hair, so somehow, like, this section of his hair sticks up and it's perfectly flat, even though the rest of his hair is, is all grown in. So it's like, um, it's like he got a mohawk, he got, got a, like, a full mohawk, and he shaved his head. But then, a few weeks later, the hair grew back in, and he hasn't bothered to shave it again. So, I don't know, it just looks really strange. He has these red sunglasses. Red sunglasses you don't see very often. Uh, mostly when I see red sunglasses, they're like red framed sunglasses that women wear. So I don't know how exactly Ripper ended up with red sunglasses. His face is sculpted to look really ugly with a, a kind of a big nose and some ridges on his forehead. He almost looks like a Klingon. And he's got huge satellite ears on both sides. Uh, this is a really ugly looking individual. Of course, that's about on par for a Dreadnought, but he does look really odd. And his jaw, his jaw is almost cartoonish-like. It's sort of squared off, kind of like a Dick Tracy villain. Uh, and he's got this black beard that just, I don't know, I, I always thought that his head didn't look exactly human. His head is shaped like a trapezoid. Let's look at Ripper's arms, and his arms are actually the best part of the action figure. On his right arm, he has this metal band that is painted with the uh, metallic gold paint that Hasbro used. And all of this metallic paint, it rubbed off very easily. And as you can see, a lot of the paint is rubbed off of mine. Um, on the hands... He had rings, and he had that on both hands, and that actually is pretty cool. That is a detail that you don't see very often. I actually do really like that. Uh, his left arm is bare, uh, but he does have the rings on the fingers, and I do like that. In fact, the other Dreadnoughts could have had that kind of detail. That's impressive. On the chest, he has this necklace, which on the card art looks like it's supposed to be broken bits of glass or metal. But to me, it just kind of looks like something he picked up at Spencer's at the mall. Uh, he also has this strap, which doesn't quite go down long enough. I mean, if you position the action figure, it looks like the strap kind of disappears on his belly without going down to his belt. And of course, that continues along to the back, and the same problem on the back. Uh, in order to make this strap look like it actually connects to something, you have to kind of bend them over like that, and that just looks stupid. The strap, I guess, is supposed to connect to the backpack, but it doesn't look, really look like it would work. It's, 
got a strap on one side, so I would think that the heavy generator being held on by one strap would, if it were real, it would kind of swing out to the side like that. It just doesn't make any sense. He's got some sculpted on muscles, which look all right, I guess. And up here, he has some really tiny grenades. Uh, they look like grenades, and I've complained about this before, how the sculpting on a lot of G.I. Joe action figures uh, use extra gr grenades uh, when it looks like they just can't think of any other detail to put on them. So you just get grenades everywhere, even where it's not really logical, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't think it really makes any sense here. And they're not even full-size grenades, they're like little micro-grenades. He has this knife here with kind of a jagged handguard, and that looks pretty vicious. But then he has this ripped camouflage t-shirt, and you can see the sculpted in uh, rips on the shirt, and that goes all the way around to the back. And I know this is supposed to make him look rough and look like, you know, kind of a rough customer, but I think it really looks silly. I mean, he's got kind of a midriff here. Uh, he, he looks like he's trying to dress like Gwen Stefani or something. Ripper's waist piece is very plain. He has this black leather belt and it goes along to the back and it goes through the belt loops. Uh, and this is the plainest and least interesting of the waist pieces of all the Dreadnoughts. I mean, compare that to the skull, uh, skull and crossbones belt on Buzzer and the fairly nice looking uh, silver chain belt on Torch. And this is really quite ordinary. He does have some sculpted on pockets uh, on the sides and in the back, and he has what well, I don't know, I guess is a wallet in his back pocket here. On his legs, on his right leg, he has a black holster with a pistol that is blue, the same color as his blue jeans, and it's just unpainted. They just didn't even bother to paint this. I think this is really unfortunate, and it makes the action figure look cheap. On his left leg, there is nothing. They actually didn't even bother to put any kind of detail on the left leg at all. He has some ripped jeans and some black riding boots, which are pretty cool. I guess those are alright. But really, the bottom half of this action figure is pretty lackluster. It's like they used up all the awesome for the first two, and so they had to make uh, Ripper really plain and uninteresting. I really don't like the look of this action figure overall. The bottom half is boring, and the top half just looks silly. Let's take a look at Ripper's file card. There were two versions. There was this original version with the peach-colored background, uh, but in 1986, G.I. Joe started issuing these file cards with a gray background. It would have been the same file card, but with a gray background, like the gray background for Buzzer's file card here. I don't have the gray file card for uh, Ripper, but you can just see what it would look like. This file card was printed on the back of the card on which the action figure was packaged. You can see the front of the card here, and you can see that on the card they have him using this power jaw. So uh, it's unfortunate, I think, a, a poor choice to show the action figure using this useless accessory when they could have shown him using the really awesome gun with the huge blade. Down here it has his faction as the enemy, it doesn't say Cobra, because even though the Dreadnoughts were affiliated with Cobra, they were not Cobra agents, they were an independent motorcycle gang. So it says the enemy, and it has a nice portrait of Ripper. Up here it says Dreadnought, codename Ripper, and as I've said with the other two, this is more of an alias than a codename. His file name is Harry Nod, and there's an inside joke with these Dreadnought file names, which I explained on my review of Buzzer, so make sure you check out my Buzzer review video. Ripper's place of birth is Grim Cape, Tasmania, and that is in Australia. The Dreadnoughts are an Australian motorcycle gang, and that is a link to the movie Mad Max, which did take place in Australia. Uh, even though not all of the Dreadnoughts were Australian, of course, Buzzer was British. Grim Cape is a place known as being extremely isolated. It is the far northwest tip of Tasmania, and in fact, the next landmass west of Grim Cape is Argentina, if you can imagine that. Grim Cape was also the site of an 1828 massacre of 30 Aborigines, and so it's a place with a very dark past, which is probably why it was selected as Ripper's place of birth. 
In this section it says, there are devils in Tasmania, and Ripper is probably the meanest of them all. Of course, this is referring to the Tasmanian Devil, which was a cartoon character, but is actually also a real animal that is kind of small, but especially kind of mean and nasty. Was expelled from nursery school for extorting candy from his schoolmates, and spent most of his adult life in various correctional institutions. Here is trying to paint the picture of somebody who is essentially born bad. He is a professional criminal, motivated by greed and a malignant dislike for the niceties of civilization, except for motorcycles. A motorcycle is the only type of machine that Ripper does not want to destroy. This section says, Specialty and M.O., and it has an asterisk, and it says M.O. means modus operandi. And modus operandi is Latin for mode of operation. Ripper's M.O. is edged weapons and cutting tools, is known throughout the swamps for using his blade like a cross between a fireman's axe and a can opener to unlock gates and crack safes. This reference to the swamps is his connection to Zartan. Zartan was a swamp dweller as well as a master of disguise. All of the Dreadnought file cards mentions the swamps. Buzzer is a scavenger of the swamps and Torch, uh, he scavenges the swamps and uh, Ripper, he's known throughout the swamps, and it doesn't really explain why all of the Dreadnoughts cards mentions the swamps, but the connection has to be has to be Zartan. Zartan is what all of the Dreadnoughts have in common. He is their leader. Another reason I don't like Ripper, well, there's a word for it, but there may be children watching, so I don't exactly want to say it, so I'll call him an arsehole. That's it, he's an arsehole, because British-style swearing is not really swearing. Looking at the original three Dreadnoughts, we have the disillusioned intellectual, the illiterate moron, and the arsehole. And frankly, I would take either of these two over Ripper. At least Buzzer has some intelligence, and Torch, well, he's stupid, so he kind of doesn't know any better. But Ripper, he doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. He's just destructive and mean, he hates the world, uh, and he's just a wrecking ball of hatred and venom and destruction. That was my review of Ripper and his file card, and that concludes my review of the original three Dreadnoughts. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're thinking of getting any of these Dreadnoughts, I hope you found this, these reviews informative. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you go ahead and click that thumbs up on YouTube and let me know. And if you're not subscribed to the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot of great new toy reviews coming up. You do not want to miss a single one of them. And make sure you go and like my page on Facebook because I've got a lot of updates on there that you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.